Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about PSP, 3DS, Nintendo Switch, and more. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about Nintendo 3DS emulation with Citra. Firstly here, I forgot to mention this update, but the developers kindly pointed this one out for me. So I wanna say thank you for that. They've implemented custom textures rewrite on their Netly build here. It implements support for various file formats such as DDS and KTX and compressed formats like BC7, BC5, ASTC, etc. And on top of that, custom textures and texture filters now work together correctly. And preload textures now work again, but they do say it does require a ton of RAM, even for small texture packs. And this is for Nightly 1891. Now, if you are running an older version of Windows, possibly Windows 7 or Windows 8, you might want to update to the latest version, something that's officially supported. But if for some reason you can't here, you'll want to pay attention to Nightly Build 1899, which just released. As of 1899, Citra no longer supports Windows 7 and Windows 8. They say it's officially dropped. If you wish to continue Citra on those operating systems, the latest functional build will be Nightly 1898, and you won't be able to get an updated version later than that. So for those of you running an earlier version of Windows, I'll drop a link to Nightly version 1898 in the description below, and feel free to check that out. For everybody else, head to citra-emu.org, click on Download, click on Manual Download, and click on the latest Nightly build to pick up the latest and greatest version of Citra. Or if you want to experiment a little bit more than the nightly build, you can check out the Canary build. Sometimes that'll have some features not yet debuted in the nightly build. And on top of that, if you take a look at the different platforms here for Citra, you'll notice that there's two different penguins. One of them is an app image. So if you're on Linux, you might like this brand new feature. Moving on, and we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on PC with Yuzu, and Yuzu just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, mainline version 1423 is the latest update, and this one brings about some goodies. They've added options to choose the VSync method, so in the graphics settings, you can now choose the VSync mode. FIFO, which stands for subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or first in, first out, depending on how you want to interpret that, is responsible for VSync on. First in, first out relaxed option is responsible for VSync fast. Mailbox mode is the preferred mode for most smooth experience. And intermediate mode is responsible for VSync off. Now, there are a couple of caveats here, and that's in regard to unlocking the frame rate. If you unlock the frame rate, Yuzu will default to mailbox mode. And if you've got an AMD or Intel GPU, since it doesn't have a mailbox mode, it'll switch to intermediate mode. And with intermediate mode, the 120 frames per second mod for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate now works on AMD and Intel GPUs. And they've also added in motion preview to your controller input. They've added in a small 3D cube on your controller configuration user interface to verify that motion has been set up correctly. And they've also fixed some crashing here for long plays, especially in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Next up, we're quickly talking about PSP emulation with PPSSPP, and PPSSPP has yet another update. So they just recently released version 1.15.0, and then 1.5, 1.1.2, and now 0.3. Point three here has a bunch more bug fixes, so you'll want to make sure you're updated with the latest version. Next up, we're talking about an incredibly small and incredibly fast Game Boy emulator, Peanut GB. Peanut GB can run at full speed on a Raspberry Pi Pico and also got a brand new update. So version 1.2.0 has just dropped, and they say this release contains several improvements to performance and compatibility. They also say it's been demonstrated to run games at full speed on the RP2040 microcontroller. If you are curious about Peanut GB, it's free, it's open source, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. And speaking about free and open source, next up we're talking about Launch Pass. And if you use emulators on your Xbox One or Xbox Series X and S, you might be interested in this front end. Launch Pass is a front end and fork of RetroPass. While it doesn't currently have support for emulators like Duck Station and Aether SX2, they did just get a brand new release and it's got a whole bunch of bug fixes here. And if you are interested in this one, Arcades Games also has a full tutorial on how to set it up and get going with it. And I'll drop a link to this video in the description below. And speaking about Xbox, last up here, we're talking about their arch rivals, PlayStation. And this is more just food for thought and just a rumor at this point in time. 
but apparently there's a Metal Gear Solid 3 remake in the works and it might be unveiled at an upcoming PlayStation Showcase. And Jez, who's an editor over at Windows Central, says it might be a PlayStation exclusive. And to add fuel to that fire, Jez also says they've heard that Sony has landed a deal with Konami for Silent Hill, Metal Gear, and also possibly Castlevania. A very interesting choice to possibly make this an exclusive hot off the heels of the Microsoft Activision Blizzard court case. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.